What's up, metal and heavy music fans? Today we are ranking the albums of Decapitated Through Cancer Culture. All right, let's dive right in with Winds of Creation in 2000. So this was released on Earache and produced by fellow Polish death metal legend Peter Wikzurek of Vader. Probably butchering that pronunciation, but I'm a big fan of his work. Fantastic riffs on this thing. Very techy. Love that crazy transition on Nine Steps. Nice solo on that track as well. I like the spooky little synth track, Dance Macabre too, which makes for a pretty great lead into the cover of Slayer's Mandatory Suicide. Solid, if not pretty standard death metal, clearly influenced by all of the 90s bands that came before, hearing elements of Immolation, Cannibal Corpse, Dying Fetus, etc. Though Vogue also cites Dimebag Daryl as an influence on the groove. What brings it down a bit for me are the vocals. Like, it pretty much sticks to that low growl all the way through. I know death metal purists may even prefer that, but for me, I like a little bit more variety. So as sometimes is the case, I might piss off the longtime fans right from the start, but I'm not here to just toe the line and make them feel good. I'm here to share my personal opinion, and despite what your ego may say, that's all that any of us can do when it comes to musical tastes. But you can let me know down in the comments if you think this one should be ranked higher. I do think it is very impressive that the members range from only 15 to 18 in age at the time of recording, so mad respect and extra points to that. I'm going to put it at B tier. Then we have Nihility in 2002, and speaking of vocals, Sauron is definitely sounding more like Corpse Grinder on this one with that higher, throatier snarl. Perfect Dehumanization is a great opening track with the perfect mix of head-bobbing groove, techy starts and stops, blast beat-driven tremolos, and those crazy melodic picking patterns. Striking that perfect balance of pure heaviness, head-turning musicianship, and catchiness that's often really hard to achieve all of those things in one record. Same goes for Mother War, Nihility, Spheres of Madness, hearing that Dimebag influence for sure on Babylon's Pride. The compositions feel tighter, and the reviews I saw from the time seem to reflect that. Lean and mean, 39 minutes, I'm definitely putting this one at S tier. Then we have The Negation in 2004, which is another popular album. The intro is super eerie before it erupts into kind of a Vader sounding riff. Sauron continuing his evolution into Corpse Grinder to the point that if someone had told Told me that it was him on the opening track, I totally would have believed them. This is also notably his final album with the band. Really loving the groove and start-stop chugs on Three Dimensional Defect, The Empty Throne is a real head bobber as well, and speaking of which, it does feel like there's a shift on this album more in that direction. Like, the previous ones felt like a 50-50 split between the groove and tech elements, whereas here, it's probably closer to 70-30, and again, I'd say that semi-thrashy Vader sound is the pervading comparison. And no complaints here, because I love Vader. I'd also say that might make this a better sort of gateway album as a result, although it's no less heavy by any means. I had a lot of people say this was their favorite, but personally for me, I think it falls just short of Nihility for my taste. For some reason, the songs just don't stick out as much to me. Once more though, I appreciate the lean runtime. This one at only 32 minutes, I'm gonna put it at a tier. All right, Organic Hallucinosis 2006. So a poem about an old prison man feels like it's bringing back some of that techier sound and with a slightly different guitar tone. Great riffing as usual. As for Adrian taking over on vocals, I definitely wasn't as impressed. Sauron has a much like fuller, more imposing, bloodthirsty scream, and Adrian reminds me more of like Max Cavalera on this record and with the more restricted brutish sort of hardcore influenced shouting. I do like when he gets a little bit more demented and brutal with it in certain places. Definitely an adjustment either way though. I hear more atmosphere and even kind of a Fear Factory Godflesh vibe on a lot of this album. So many bangers. Day 69, Revelation of Existence, Visual Delusion. Pretty much every song is awesome despite those vocal changes. Post Organic even has a little Meshuggah Chaos Fear energy to it and Invisible Control reminds me of Living Sacrifice. Love the bass tone here as well, and I gotta say, as somebody who loves industrial metal, I'm really digging this album. Also, just seven tracks in 32 minutes again, which, mad respect, because a lot of death metal bands tend to go on longer than they probably should, but Decapitated seem to really understand that less is often more. Also, I can recognize Septic Flesh's Spiros artwork from a mile away, and I want to ask to you commenters again, is it a hot take to like this more than The Negation? Because 
I do. I'm going to put this one at S tier. Sadly, after this was when the band had their tragic bus accident that claimed the life of Vogue's brother and band drummer Vitek, leading to an indefinite hiatus. But then they returned in 2011 with Carnival Is Forever. This was their first through Nuclear Blast records. And honestly, though, despite the lineup changes and several year gap, it sounds like they didn't miss a beat with the knife picking up right where they left off. Rasta takes over on vocals here, and I think he is a great fit. He's more similar in approach to Adrian, but with a bit more of an unhinged quality that I appreciate. Mushuga and Gojira were both directly cited as influences, and you can definitely hear that. Critics seem to really dig it, and so do I. More bangers like United with that ripping solo, and then also continuing to broaden their horizons with stuff like the title track, which is a longer, more atmospheric arrangement for them, even with some acoustic in the middle. Homo Sum also adds some guitar effects for a section that almost reminds me of a Tool interlude. I definitely hear the Gojira in 404. All around feels like a bit more of a dynamic album for them and still really great. It gets hard because all of these are good in different ways, but just in terms of personal preference when compared to the others, this one's kind of more of a higher B for me. Then we have Blood Mantra in 2014. So this is the first album that doesn't really feel much like a progression from the previous one. It's basically straight groove almost all the way through, and I don't find the riffs to be as memorable. Also feels quite a bit slower in places, even generic at times, like the verse riff and vocal pattern on Blood Mantra are just so blah, it ends up feeling uninspired. First time in the discography I found myself bored with them. Like, Nest is pretty cool, especially the tapping solo. I also like that Instinct has some very Lamb of God sounding riffs and great drumming on that one. It's a fine album, but not among my favorites. It definitely drags in places too. I'm gonna put it at C tier. And then Anti-Cult in 2017. They're just like a straight up groove metal band at this point on this album and really bland in my opinion. I know some people may really enjoy this album and that's fine, but especially as somebody who's listened to a ton of death metal and a ton of groove metal and kind of came up listening to all of Lamb of God's discography and stuff like that, this just falls short in either genre for me. I also feel like the lyrics have gotten a bit cornier. Kill the Cult is fun for what it is. Earthscar has a pretty killer ending. Never is very Pantera and Death Valuation is pretty Lamb of God. Again, I like groove metal when it's done well, but this is definitely my least favorite decapitated album and I just, I don't have a ton to say about it because there's just like not much for me to chew on gonna put it at C tier again. Let me know in the comments if you feel differently and why. And that brings us to Cancer Culture in 2022. So I agree <laughs> that the album title is kind of lame, like it's very 2019, just feels kind of outdated, but that said, that title track acts as a solid introduction both as an opener and lead single. It takes all of that great groove they've become known for in their modern iteration and kind of masters it with these very The Haunted sounding hooks with also a little touch of Gojira and the start stop riff towards the end. Just a Cigarette has some vocal choices I could do without, namely the whispery ones and then the yarly screams around the middle. That said, I do enjoy the melodic hook during that section as well with the more melancholic solo. No Cure picks things up again with its faster, highly technical riffing, lots of great picking patterns alongside some of the most impressive and chaotic drumming on the record. Very dynamic too with the little break further highlighting James's work on the kit as well as a very ripping guitar solo. Hello Death is a great single, kicking things off with an opening scream and syncopated riffing straight out of Meshuggah's Destroyer Race Improve or Chaosphere. And then you've also got Ginger's Tatiana broadening their stylistic horizons once more with her very specific brand of clean vocals. <laughs> It was kind of interesting to see both the Ginger Simps say that she's too good for this feature and the death metal elitists grumble about the inclusion of any singing at all. Why do you hate fun? But I think it was a very smart marketing move for the band and ends up being one of the best tracks on the album. And the clean singing guest features continue with Iconoclast, this one courtesy of Machine Head's Rob Flynn. More infectious grooves on this one, albeit a little bit more generic this time, and I'm not really sure that Rob adds 
a ton to this one. I can kind of take it or leave it. But if you just wanted more of that straightforward aggression, suicidal space programs got you covered with plenty of thrashy, high-octane riffage and blast beats, or also the venomous Locked, which will grind you to dust and only needs a minute and 17 seconds to prove that it can. Hours as Battlegrounds, on the other hand, goes for a more slow and atmospheric approach, which is plenty malevolent and foreboding in its own right. And then also closing on a heavy note with Last Supper, which kind of combines all of these elements into a pretty effective final summary. Overall, really solid listen in a pretty tight 38 minute runtime that leaves you wanting more rather than overstaying its welcome. It's very re-listenable and it also combines what was great about their roots with the experimentation in new directions. If I were doing a standalone review, I'd probably give it about a B, but within the realm of their own discography, I feel pretty good about putting it at A tier. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more death metal tier lists and this playlist for my thoughts on plenty more 2022 new releases. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.